yes good morning uh, today we'll be doing this electromotive force or simply we call it emf some people write it this way the way i showed it there or you may also write it simply emf without any dots in the middle or even this you could write emf like that electromotive force all right uh, even in your 10th class you must have done this electromotive force and uh, some teacher must have told you also that this is some force which pushes the electrons and naturally it looks so natural that once the word force is used and you define it in terms of force but remember uh, this is not a force basically so let us put the record very straight in the very beginning itself that it is not a force it is actually work sometimes some words stick like that for whatever reason some scientist in the beginning or some engineer in the beginning must have called it electromotive force i don't remember exactly when this word uh, came into effect but somebody named it as electromotive force out of respect or out of uh, habit we still call it electromotive force and in some books i have seen they write it also the force with which electromotive force is one which forces the electrons if not the force with the, which that way they define but this is the one which forces the electrons to move around so we tend to get into comfort zone calling it a force but remember it is not force it is actually work what work what work for unit charge not just work but work for unit charge to be more precise but even that's not enough work for unit charge uh, when it is moved in a closed path that is actually the main definition of uh, electromotive force so i think that is clear to you now all okay siddharth yes sir tell me again what is it uh, it is work done per unit charge to move the discharge along the close along a closed circuit uh you do not call it test charge now huh hmm? yes one coulomb charge you take and move it just around a loop and bring it back to the same point so what our work is done that's what you mean by electromotive force all right children everybody yes, yes sir right now experimentally speaking look you see one excited battery there probably there are six lead accumulators in it what is the lead accumulator children the car battery basically that is people call it lead accumulator lead acid cell like that there will be two electrodes uh, probably i think one is lead the other is lead oxide and the electrolyte is h2so4 plus water in a, in a proper proportion okay that is there and one voltmeter is connected to it and uh, here we said this voltmeter's uh, resistance is infinity voltmeter's resistance is infinity there look at this here i have written infinity now when you connected this voltmeter across the terminals of the this battery it reads something an voltmeter is supposedly measuring potential difference between two point children okay so whatever reading this records here is what you call 
EMF. Here, I have not given that definition immediately in terms of work which we have, we have talked just now. Just have a battery, take a battery, connect one voltmeter across it. And it shows some reading. Voltmeter reads potential difference between two points in a circuit. And ammeter measures current. Okay, voltmeter will connect uh, in parallel in a circuit. Ammeter will connect in, a, in, in series in a circuit. Those things will uh, come to us later. But right now, look at that uh, definition I've given in the experimental sense. What is the definition? Can you see? The potential difference across the terminals of a cell in an open circuit. So that is going to be the key. Do you follow? The potential difference across the terminals of a cell terminals plus terminal minus terminal like that we call okay in an open circuit what is an open circuit children open circuit is in what current does not flow here current does not flow because this voltmeter has an infinite resistance do you follow this any question here this this voltmeter has infinite resistance. Current does not flow through the voltmeter or through the cell. But it records the reading. Is it possible? Especially the voltmeter is designed to show some deflection only current when current flows through it. But since we need to understand what is EMF and voltmeter is a popular one, everybody knows. We have just given that here to begin with. R equals infinity, we said ideally it will be never infinity. Always a very, very small current flows, very, very small current flows. But let us think for a while, it's not flowing, but the deflection is shown. I'll slowly correct it later. Okay, so whatever potential difference it shows now, here on the voltmeter is what you call EMF. Try to understand this open circuit business. I am measuring the potential difference across the terminals of a cell when current is not flowing in it. When current is not flowing in the cell, I'm measuring the potential difference. How did this potential difference came about in a cell? Can you tell me? Anybody? Some chemical reactions happened, right? Some chemical reactions happened and charge got separated. One electrode is made, has become negative, the other electrode has become positive, we say. Some electro electrons are moved to one side, positive charges to the other side. And when you already know from your electrostatics of understanding that when plus is sitting over a minus, around it electric field is zero, right? But when plus and minus get separated, that forms a field. So whatever happened in the chemicals there, the electrolyte and the uh, electrodes, charge separation has happened finally. That means a potential difference is formed, an electric field is formed. Do you follow this? So when you don't connect, for example, an external circuit, that is when you don't connect a bulb across this battery, that energy inside the cell which is stored will be there. It won't, it, it won't start getting spent in the bulb. So in other words, what am I trying to tell you? When this uh, battery is there and when zero current is flowing, you're actually measuring the true potential difference formed as a result of the chemical reactions. Okay, so that's what you mean by the potential difference across the terminals of a cell in an open circuit. And that is called EMF. This is an experimental way of defining uh, potential difference, sorry, uh, electromotive force. 
of course you can show it in a circuit representation like that because previously i practically put that uh, battery in which there are six cells actually speaking car battery apparently is 12 volts if i remember okay but that all that can be taken as one cell only and remember with single uh, single unit is a cell but many cells connected will become battery but in uh, popular language once again even a small one cell we call battery battery is such a i mean well known word now car batteries we say cell phone battery is discharged we say okay but here i have just shown one one cell in this circuit and one voltmeter we connected r equals infinity we put do you follow so now suppose current is not flowing and voltmeter is reading just nothing difference nothing different from the previous one i just only showed it in a circuit uh, symbol way man uh, the cell we put here plus this shows plus this shows minus this voltmeter symbol that's all so circuit representation i put here so if some some figure is given like this and if somebody asked you what is the voltmeter reading you will say it is emf simply okay reading of this voltmeter is emf is written down at this end you see hmm so that is this one the reading of the voltmeter is emf here no current no current is going to the circuit all right now let us continue uh in fact however high the resistance of voltmeter may be a small current flows through the voltmeter and therefore through the cell i told you already our aim was to measure that potential difference formed in the cell as as a result of those chemical reactions so once current flows inside the cell a part of that energy is absorbed by the cell itself like when current is flowing through a cell just touch it you feel hot that means some energy is being wasted inside the cell itself so you won't be measuring the true potential difference that was formed in the beginning that's the reason voltmeter as such cannot measure this potential difference very accurately potential difference between the terminals in an open circuit we, we said that means we did not want the current to flow but after all the voltmeter's design is that there will be a coil inside you pass current through that that coil will coil is placed between two magnetic poles the magnetic field applies a torque and that's how the coil turns out that's how the pointer connected to the coil turns but we try to make it as high as possible the resistance of the voltmeter a small current flows through the voltmeter and as well small current flows through the cell therefore you measure the potential difference there or the emf actually remember emf is the original potential difference i told what is original potential difference that was formed because of the original reactions uh, uh, the stored energy between the two points or in the electric field between the two electrodes basically so once current flows once energy is lost inside in the form of heat you measure only the lesser one the decreased one actually speaking no not exact but not decrease uh, I'll, i'll come back to that i'll make it more proper now what we are trying to tell in this place is in fact however high the resistance of voltmeter may be a small current flows through the voltmeter and therefore through the cell therefore voltmeter cannot read emf very accurately yes a potentiometer actually we could have put it we could have started def, uh, start uh, started defining emf experimentally this way only 
in, in the place of that old meter, I could have put potentiometer, but that's a new word to us. You have not learned that yet. Therefore, I put that old meter and said the resistance is high. So let us admit, first of all, that old meter cannot measure the EMF very accurately. It may be, it may be the accuracy may be 99.9, .9, depending on how high you made the resistance of the old meter. But there's a thing called potentiometer. That measures the EMF to an accuracy of 100% because during the measurement using a potentiometer, whatever it is, don't, don't worry, we'll be doing that in the, in the same lesson, in the current electricity lesson only we'll be doing, but probably uh, at the end of the lesson, basically. So supposing some potentiometer is there, when you use that to measure the potential difference across the terminals of the cell, current is not flowing to the cell. Current is actually zero. So now you should get that idea that there is already a potential difference formed for whatever reason. Remember, energy is stored, but potential difference is a measure of that energy. Why? Potential difference is defined as the work done to move one Coulomb charge, right? It's not that if I said lead acid cells uh, EMF is 2.1 volts or nearly 2 volts, it doesn't mean that 2 joules is stored in the cell, right? 2 volts is what? 2 joules per sec, per Coulomb. So, a potential difference is formed means basically energy is stored depending on the charging time, whatever, whatever, some energy will be stored. And as it uh, keeps spending it in a resistance, the chemical reactions replenish the energy and maintain the that, that potential difference. But over a period of time, that runs down also. One good thing in our physics uh, lesson is that lessons, in the current electricity lessons, most of the times we assume that our EMF is not decreasing. In practice, batteries run down. That's actually a different uh, segment later. Uh, we have to discuss the chemistry of it. Uh, we don't require to do it right now. And you must have done some chemistry in the, uh, what is that, uh, chemical, uh, in cells, all this electrochemistry you learn there. Okay, so many cells you learn. Uh, reactions here, reactions there, how that EMF is formed, all that you learn there. But for a while, in our lesson, let us think that even though current keeps flowing once you connect a external circuit to the cell, the chemical reactions keep happening further again and again, and somehow we are maintaining that EMF, let us think. All right. Now, yes. But when you want to measure the EMF, you cannot run the current through the circuit. You have to have a condition where current in the circuit is zero. Current in the circuit is zero when I said what I mean to say is current in the cell is zero. Like, I don't know whether you understood. When current flows in the whole circuit, it has to go back through the cell again, right? Do you follow this? Sai so Kiran. Sir, do you understand what I mean by that? Current in the circuit, current in the cell. Like if you put one uh, cell like this and some connections here, resistances, whatever, whatever, you can put as much as you want. If I said current is flowing out of this plus and into the circuit, we should finally come back to the cell and go once again out of the plus of the cell, right? So when you said current is flowing in the circuit, it means current is flowing in the cell. I want a condition when current does not flow the cell, but I should be in a position to measure this potential difference. How is it done practically in a potentiometer? We'll learn later, but just let us suppose that you are measuring it, right? So that's what you mean by EMF. And Voltmeter cannot do this really. Though I started showing you with an voltmeter there, voltmeter cannot measure EMF very accurately. It measures up to 99.9% .9 accuracy, but not 100%. So we use a thing called potentiometer to measure the potential difference between the cells, terminals, when current is not flowing. Okay, that's the reason why we should say that potentiometer measures 
EMF very accurately or more accurate, very accurately. There's nothing like uh, any less accuracy will be there. 100% accuracy we achieve with that. Okay. Yes, I already talked about it. Chemical reactions. What is chemical reactions? I just, I'm not going to do the chemistry of lead acid cell here right now. Or if you want some time later, we might do it separately. If that helps you in understanding your electrochemistry better. Chemical reactions, making and breaking of bonds. Finally, chemical reactions, is that right? Huh? Tell me, making and breaking of bonds. There'll be net energy release, try to understand. Converts potential energy of individual molecules into chemical electrical potential energy between the electrodes by separating charges and depositing them on the electrodes. This statement you need to follow. When you use the word chemical energy, what do you mean by that? It's basically the molecular potential energy. Try to understand nothing else. I've been telling you. Uh, we make it appear there are uh, so many energies, chemical energy, heat energy, uh, what muscular energy, mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is already, we already know about it, U plus K. That's what it is actually, finally. And what else? Uh, many, many things we use, no? But there's nothing like so many energies. Ultimately, it is either potential or kinetic. And of course, we need, we need to add the mass energy. Because mass is also a form of energy. And that can be converted to energy, we know very well. So ultimately, when you use the word chemical energy, it is molecular potential energy of individual molecules, of course. You, you'll have all those chemical reactions, making and breaking of bonds, like uh, when you have H2SO4 and water together, that itself will be having positive and negative ions created already, right? Isn't it so? H2SO4 and water in a combination already has ions created. And then these ions which are near to the electrodes will interact with those electrodes, lead atoms there. So this kind of a, uh, what you call making and breaking of the bonds will happen. And finally, some work will be done to store good amount of charge on one and the other, like number of electrons in one, one place and the positive ions on the, at the other place. So this will separate what you mean by charges. Once you separate the charges, you got an electric field. Try to understand. That means there's a potential difference. Once electric field is there, you require to do work to move one charge from one place to another place. That's what you mean by potential difference. So this potential energy, electrical potential energy, now we call it electrical potential energy. The moment you separated charges, you already stored energy in the field. And that we call as potential energy, electrical potential energy. You can write this electrical potential energy per coulomb will, will, will give a measure of what we call as EMF. So can I believe that you got a feel for this uh, EMF now? Anybody? Himanshi, are you there? Yes, sir. Hmm. No, actually, this, this particular thing is very I mean, uh, tricky business. Uh, we have to use proper words. I'll tell you what, how is it, how is it spoiled uh, in the classes generally. Uh, just let me come back to the next one. After that, we'll see. Yes. Now, a new word, terminal potential difference. TPD, I put. Once again, an experimental definition only we are giving. Once again, we are giving the experimental definition only. The potential difference across the terminals of a cell in a closed circuit is called terminal potential difference. Yeah, where that uh, misunderstanding comes for people is, 
people use drop the word terminal here. Is somebody waiting? I don't see anything here. Okay. People use two words like this: EMF and potential difference. Ninety-nine percent of the teachers and students get into this. Uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, I don't say completely wrong, but definitely not a good uh, way of talking about these two things. The moment you said EMF and potential difference, you are saying that EMF is not potential difference. It's not like that. Use the word terminal potential difference. This actually gives proper meaning. Sometimes in physics, the words also give the meaning. Sometimes in physics, I'm telling you. In biology, most of the times, the biology and medicine, medicine especially, when you are studying the human physiology and uh, anatomy, the words they have chosen in the beginning to represent their function as well, many times. But here in physics, no, just now I told you, electromotive forces. Such a meaningless word, actually speaking. But here, this terminal PD helps you to understand the meaning of it properly. Whatever potential difference is appearing across the terminals when current is flowing. In other words, whatever potential difference is dropped inside the cell, you're not measuring, but what you are measuring is only through the external circuit. You're not going inside and connecting anything. Try to understand. The, the battery is made up of many elements. So that will be dropped across the whole elements individually there. So there's no way that you go inside and measure those that potential difference inside the cell. But when you connect something like this, say a bulb is connected here. Current flows, like current is flowing like the sum. Potential difference, potential is dropped here. Some potential difference is appearing here. So when I connect voltmeter, in fact, what am I doing? I am measuring the potential difference across this bulb. This is what you mean by terminal potential difference. And naturally, you can see that now it will be less than that EMF we measured when current was not flowing. Of course, don't all the time think that this terminal potential difference is less than the EMF. I'm talking about a single cell like this. In a combination of cells, when current flows in a particular way inside the cell, the potential difference which appears across its cell terminals may be greater than the EMF also. That is, that will come later. But right now, just have a single cell. Think no current flows inside the cell. And you had a mechanism to measure the potential difference across it. This regular uh, our uh, touch light cells, when you see, 1.5 volts will be written. So that is the potential difference you'll measure if current is not flowing inside the cell. But to that cell, you connected a small bulb, the bulb is glowing. Now you connect your, uh, what you call, voltmeter or whatever, potentiometer across the terminals. Current starts flowing and some energy will be lost inside. That you are you're measuring. What is appearing across the bulb, we actually measure there. That's what you mean by the terminal potential difference. Okay, here, closed circuit means current is not zero. Current in circuit is not zero. That is the old uh, slide uh, copied, so it's coming uh, equal to zero. So, here, not equal to zero, I should put, just a minute. Not equal to zero. Current is flowing. All right, current in the circuit is not zero here. So whatever potential difference is appearing here is what you call terminal P. So that's, that's where you can say in general, not in general, in a particular case of one cell there, you can say that EMF will be greater than terminal potential. EMF is greater than terminal potential difference for a single cell circuit, of course. So, any question you've got? Um, of course, let me once again show it in terms of 
the circuits because this is what we uh, draw in the notebooks and do the problems uh, from right the circuits so just this left hand side one what are reading now you got once again i i'm just to, uh, getting away with this altimeter business because i'm putting r equals infinity and i'm saying current is not flowing but you could as well say without r equals infinity you can say there's a potentiometer there which is measuring the potential difference when uh, and current does not flow there you can think okay tell me any question here this actually gives you a proper uh, meaning here this is how the current is flowing this way right current flows like this current doesn't flow here so now when i connect voltmeter it actually measures this potential difference okay now i want your feedback anything bhavana sir yes sir hmm okay when i start doing uh, numericals that becomes more clear but as an idea is it okay or not now it's possible that i can measure the potential difference uh, when current is not flowing and that should be greater than when the current flows inside the cell that as a basic idea if you can catch probably after doing numericals that becomes even more clear children tell me not saying much internet connection is unstable i am able to reach you we'll see Mm, now electromotive force is basically a potential difference it is okay now we'll go for a theoretical kind of a, an explanation see you go and connect uh, voltmeter or what is meter and measure it that reading is emf is, if you say you will always ask a question what is this thing what is happening who what is being measured all that you think like take one uh, whatever uh, lead acid cell take it to the class and connect one potentiometer and say some reading is coming this this reading is uh, uh, emf if you said naturally one student would ask okay this is showing some reading all right but how is it showing what is it actually people ask you might say potential difference but how is it read what is it all these questions come up right so we need to now see what's happening what's happening inside it but i first give a generalized definition here remember electromotive force need not have to be uh, defined only for a battery here battery actually the one which is doing work try to understand so definitely it will be defined in terms of work done per coulomb by the battery only ultimately as far as a battery and some bulbs connected are concerned but what emf generated in uh generators right the not chemical cells what do you say emf will be generated in an alternating current generator or a dc current direct current generator even there emf is generated or sometimes something else will happen actually like you change magnetic fields uh, in the space even that creates one emf so emf is defined in a general way first look at that circuit plus one coulomb charge is taken from that point where i put a dot and we moved it along a closed path like that and brought it to the same point that's what you mean by emf okay uh work when we said force must be there right so force dot dr will be the work on q coulombs 
so for one coulomb how much do you understand do you get my point here look at this we said from here we are moving like that so we apply a force on that or who applies force electric field applies force now we know very well there is nothing like you applying the force you create an electric field that electric field will take care of the work right so force per unit see we, we said to move one coulomb charge right so work equals you could have written some f dot dl but work by q is what we wanted so that becomes this emf equals f by q is what e dot dl but along a closed path this is putting it in mathematical terms so this is a very generalized definition for emf maybe you are getting a doubt now come on electric field is moving a charge from one point and bringing back to the same point is in the work zero hmm it's not going to be zero this is a different kind of a field okay how it happens in the battery i'll show you but if that comes to your mind it should come actually because we have been saying no the work done by the electric field in a closed path is zero that's a conservative electric field so what develops in a battery is not a conservative electric field it sets up conservative electric field in a circuit but ultimately remember current is flowing heat is coming out from the wires so it it cannot be conservative field whatever field is formed inside the battery is not going to be a conservative field so the, you can call it non conservative field basically that does work actually remember this field is going to be inside the battery only it's not going to be all along but it does few things i'll come back to that when i discuss how current flows in a metal wire when connected to a cell so but of course definitely you will always get this doubt when you define it this way work done in a closed path by the electric field means are is it not zero why are we saying uh, it is emf remember this is going to be a non conservative electric field the work of a non conservative electric field which won't become zero right now let us continue yes in a circuit with an ex external resistance connected across the cell terminals we are defining it we said in a closed path whatever work that electric field does the moment you said electric field strength does the work you are already saying that work work done per coulomb i don't know whether you understood the previous definition in words when i put we said it is a work done to move plus 1 coulomb charge in a closed path right but the way i wrote it e dot dl e is nothing but force by coulomb so f dot dl by q will be finally work done per coulomb only right but how do you uh, what do you call connect that definition to a battery here we are saying the total work done in moving a plus 1 coulomb charge from plus 2 minus of the cell through r could you see that even here i am still following the closed path idea only but i am making more specific here so that th this is comes somewhat a functional kind of a definition for circuits functional means like you'll use this kind of an idea while doing your problems exercise there on circuits now look at this work done to move plus 1 coulomb charge where is it yes this one huh plus 1 coulomb charge from plus 2 minus of the cell through r plus 1 coulomb charge like this plus 2 minus 2 external r like this look this this connections have no resistance they will be made of copper copper has very small resistance 
but this R is made up of alloy cytoly some time ago. So to get few thousands of ohms, we need to use alloys to make resistance wires. So now when I said a plus one coulomb charge is moved from here to here, I'm moving it through basically the external resistance. Okay. And then from minus to plus inside the cell. See, cell has its own resistance. It's made up of materials, solution, all that. Even they show opposition to the flow of current. So that symbolically will put as small r. Okay. Now, yes, from plus to minus of the cell through r and then through r from minus to plus. Through r from minus to plus, this total work done is what you call EMF. That makes a closed path here. See, when I said current is flowing this way, I'm saying that positive charges are going this way. In, in effect, you know, actually in a metal wire, electrons move this way. But that we need not bother. All the time, we'll talk in terms of the conventional current. And you see, one coulomb charge means how many electrons basically? Do you remember? Anybody? Quick, tell me. One coulomb charge means how many electrons? 6.25 into 10 power 80. 0.25 into 10 to the power 80 in electrons. So the work done to move 6.25 into 10 to the power 80 electrons from plus of the battery through R to minus and from minus to plus of the battery inside the cell, that is small r, is what you call the EMF. Look, I don't know whether you uh, understood. In when the circuit is when the current is not flowing inside the cell or in the circuit, that EMF we formed, the potential difference we formed is inactive. The moment you connect a resistance outside and current flows, it started working. It started working. It works in R, capital R, that is external circuit. And it works in itself. The total work done per one coulomb is EMF, which was, I told you, was not acting at all, which, which, which was not coming into action when current was not flowing. That's why, experimentally speaking, you could measure it when current was not flowing. The moment current starts flowing, it's still there. Don't worry, it's doing. It's becoming less as a whole. It's there, but it is spending. Something in capital R, something in small r. The something in small r we are not measuring when you are connecting the voltmeter in a circuit where current is actually flowing. You are only measuring what is uh, appearing in capital R. Tell me. I'll go for numbers and talk about it. But you need to keep this. This I told you. This particular thing is slightly uh, I mean, uh, tricky business. If you want to really understand in a conceptual way. It is definitely going to be a little challenging. Not really if you're looking for uh, understanding. Okay. Now. Yes. Is it okay with people? This this kind of a definition. Are you okay with it? Inside, Kiran. Yes, sir. You are there. Yes, sir. Mm. Anurima. Yes, sir. Ah, the total work done in moving a plus one coulomb charge from plus to minus of the cell through capital R and then through small r from minus to plus is called EMF. In a way, I've already told you how the current flows. Hmm? We will come for more uh, details uh, later. But you know, the conventional current should flow out of plus and enter into minus. Which is at, now from here itself, you can understand electrons are flowing exactly in the other way. There is still that heading is left. What is that? Uh, mechanism of uh, conduction in metals, the low range root theory. In that, I'll make it much more clear. Right. Now, we can write like this. What is that we are writing? That is EMF E equals a different E, IR plus IR. Work done per one coulomb is given by what? Ohm's law. 
you know, slice out what V equals IR we wrote now. V is what potential difference. Potential difference is what? Work done for cool. And we wrote it as IR, right? Huh? Tell me. So yes, sir. Uh, EMF equals IR, that is W by Q naught in R, external resistance. I into small r, W by Q naught in small r of this cell is called EMF. And remember, this one is the one which is being measured when you connect potentiometer voltmeter across the terminals when current is flowing. This is missing from our reading. So this this IR is called terminal PD. Terminal PD plus potential difference dropped in the cell is called EMF. And of course, remember, EMF is not the energy stored complete total energy stored. That is a measure of work done to move. One Coulomb charge in a round circuit. There is some energy stored in the cell that will be uh, spent continuously by the cell. But as I told you in our physics lessons, rarely we bother about whether the cell is running down or not. There may be a particular situation created for a problem, but mostly our EMF is constant. How is it maintained constant? The chemical reactions we keep replenishing that energy so the tmf is maintained between plus and minus but the tmf is continuously spending energy in itself and as well in the external resistance is the total physical uh, drama which is going there children tell me any questions here please before i continued So therefore, in a single circuit, I can write EMF equals terminal PD plus PD across small r. Now, yeah, I've told you just now in the previous uh, slide, when you connect to an voltmeter like this, when external resistance there, current keeps flowing like this, you measure basically potential difference across this. And this voltmeter now reads IR, which is called terminal PD. Now tell me children, Can I proceed? Can I proceed? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I'll just give it in terms of numbers. Okay. Now I have one cell like this. We connected one R across it. Let me say. This R is some 10 ohms. The unit of R is ohm. EMF of this is 4 volts, for example. And the internal resistance will be given there. For example, that is some 2, two ohms. So we should be always writing like, we'll think that I is flowing like that. So 4 will be written as what? I into 10 plus I into 2. Is it okay for you? I have written down already there, no? I am just putting it like that. So I equals what then? 4 by 12. That is 1 by 3 amperes. So this is the method we need to understand. Look, even if I have many cells and even if I have many resistors, I could reduce all the cells to one cell if I want it, for example. Of course, that will be a tedious process. We don't do it later. But in principle, I can think like that. If, even if there are many cells, I can reduce it to a single cell of single EMF. And all the resistance I can reduce to one single R. Then that I equals, I could write like this. We already have written in general, EMF equals IR plus IR we wrote, right? So any time I can write I equals EMF divided by R plus R. Okay. And whatever current flows in the whole external resistance is the current which flows through the cell. That should come back. 
so if you use the terminology of series and uh, parallel they are in series the internal resistance of the cell and the external resistance here are always in series same current goes the main property of series uh, combination is that current in the two resistors is same if you want to say something like that series people keep saying that don't think they are in parallel okay so this is how the emf will be connected 4 volts is i into 10 plus i into 2 do you all follow this huh children you're not speaking yes sir hmm. now just write one question there this I recorded actually. I, I'll put it there on the YouTube. You watch it again. Mm. Now, one question you write there. One simple numerical problem. A cell has an EMF, four volts and internal resistance internal resistance of 2 ohms huh? and external resistance 8 an external resistance of 8 ohms is connected across the terminals of the cell across the terminals of the cell find the terminal pd that's a question find the terminal pd so what should we do do you all right this question, a cell has an EMF of 4 volts and internal resistance of 2 ohms. An external resistance of 8 ohms is connected across the terminals of the cell. Find the terminal potential difference. Hmm? You could visualize the circuit. The same circuit is there anyway, but I will show it in the next one. Look, this is 4 volts here, 2 ohms. 8 we connected. So simply what will I write? I equals... Huh? 4 by 8 plus 2 is all right, children. 4 by 10, that is 0 0.4 amperes is the current. Now, yeah, terminal yeah. potential difference is what? 0.4. I, yeah, I into capital R. 0.4 0 0.4 in 8. 8. So, 3.2 volts. And check small IR, for example. How much is that? 0.4 into 2. 0.8. Add up 0.8 to 3.2, that will give 4 volts. So this is how you need to really understand EMF and terminal PD in a practical sense. Now, continue the question. What additional resistance? What additional resistance in series? with 8 with 8 ohm resistance will make will make the terminal PD terminal PD 3.6 volts what additional resistance in series with 8 ohms will make the terminal PD 3.6 volts. Come on. I just give you a minute or two for you.
Yes, Kaja. Sir. Did you get it? There's not much uh, here. Sir, is it 10 ohms? 10 ohms. Sai Kiran. And who else? Anybody else? 10 ohms is the right answer, of course. Is someone getting 1 ohm? Tell me if you're getting 1 ohm. Tell me if you're getting 1 ohm. Yes, sir. Uh, N Sai Kiran is getting 1 ohm and P Sai Kiran is getting 10 ohms. So who is right then? Look, you'll get 1 ohm if you put the same current again. Huh? Let yes, sir. Uh, same current won't flow once you connect one more resistance, right? So now the same circuit you show like this. Call that as X. This is 8. 4 volts and 2 ohms, right? So the new current you should find outside. Hmm? Okay, hmm. New current, not the same old current you should do, right? Once X is connected, Current changes, right? In fact, current decreases. Huh? So what should I write? I 4 divided by 8 plus x plus 2. That is 4 by 10 plus x. Now, I into capital R is the terminal period. 4 by 10 plus x into what is capital R now? This one. Plus Yes, 8 plus x. This should be our, according to the question, 3.6 volts. Then you simplify it, you're going to get x equals 10 ohms. Tell me, children. Hmm? Yes, sir. Hmm. So, can we say that we followed this EMF and terminal PD somewhat? Yes. Uh, remember the whole uh, elliptical circuits, their analysis becomes smart and meaningful if you have this picture. You can manage without this understanding of this, but uh, you can do many questions uh, without uh, putting your pen. If you can look at the circuit this way, which way? There is external resistance, there is internal resistance, there is a cell. Cell sets up some potential difference across external, that's called terminal PD. And that I into small r is there inside, that one we measured. This kind of a total uh, picture actually makes the things easier. You, you will attempt from a conceptual viewpoint, not by habit and uh, only logic. Logic helps, but there should be physics behind it. All right. Hmm? So I'll be putting it up there if you did not write don't worry just watch it because our problem is this way basically like when the teacher speaks if you are especially not habituated to uh, what you call comprehending from the speech that would be a trouble like if you don't have a habit of listening to a story that's a trouble and second thing for many of us, even English is an issue there. So for both the reasons, uh, in the class, we don't get things properly. But whereas 50% of your job must be over in the class, I keep telling you all the time. So by evening, probably I'll put it there. And uh, Delta Junior College uh, uh, YouTube channel, it's there already, you know. So just watch it and tell me back again. Now I'll be recording every lesson every day.